Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That town is dead town is the poor. There's a blessing way that you cannot contend. Amen. Amen. Good old soul swagger used to say years ago, that town is dead. Down into the water, he tore it out that last rain. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There are some of you here, diseased and afflicted, and sickness rains in your mind. I already know. <laughs> All right, hallelujah. We do thank the Lord, amen, for the opportunity, amen, to come, to come together, amen, with those, the Bible says, a lot of precious faith. Yeah. Wonderful, amen. It's a wonderful thing when God's people come together, amen. Yeah. The scripture tells us in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, he says, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. It's important to come together, yeah. I can get it at the house. There's something God ain't going to give you at the house. Right. We need the community of faith. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. It's good that you, you can. You can serve God at the house. I agree. And you, and you need to serve him at the house. But there's something about coming out and assembling ourselves together. There's a strength. Amen. There's a strength when you come together that, 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 that really not going to be experienced at home. Amen. Well, I can just watch the live stream. And we encourage those that can't come to watch the live stream. Amen. But there's still no substitute. You know, we, you know, I work in telemedicine. The other day I was connected with a group of students up in Duluth, up in Atlanta up there. And all high school students and I just did demonstrations for them. And they had, it was an important question. They said, is this going to replace having to go to the doctor? I said, no, no, no. There's nothing ever going to replace that. I said, this is a supplement. Right. It was not designed to replace. It was designed because I mean, many doctors, well, they, like do, they, they like to do their initial visits in person, mm -hmm. and then they do their follow-ups uh, live stream. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. So this is a supplement. So the, so the live stream was never meant to replace, amen, uh, to, to replace us coming together. Right. But it is a good supplement for those that can't come sometimes. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, sometimes, you know, I understand it's all of us have things that happen that's beyond our control. Amen. And sometimes things happen that, you know, that, that you can't come, and I get that. Hallelujah. But y'all be able to get here most of the time. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to leave it right there. I don't know about to get in bondage. Now, hallelujah. You, you know your situation better than I do. That's right. That's right. But I do know that some folks, I can't come, but you're not going to trouble going to Walmart. Okay. <laughs> hallelujah. Like the guy called out sick one day and ran into the boss, man, at the, at the, at the, at the, at the supermarket. But you were sick. I got the feeling there. Sometimes it'd be matters of the heart, you know? Because people will make time to do what they really want to do. If it's, if it's in your heart to do a thing, hallelujah. But anyway, we thank the Lord. Amen. We, we, we're going to get out of that call. We're going to get in the body. Amen. We are going to the fifth chapter of Galatians. We're going we're gonna to go on through these works of this flesh. Hallelujah. But I want to get to some good ground. This works of the flesh, I tell you, and it's rampant. The works of the flesh are rampant even in the church. Yeah. And that's the sad part about it. But this is what happens. Anytime you move away from God's prescribed order, and that's what I want to talk about. I mean, grace is God's order. God, grace is God's prescribed order. Yeah. And if you have good, if you get away from grace, then the only other place to go is flesh. Right. Right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because you go to law. And what law does, the more, the more law you try to keep, the more you're going to incite works of the flesh. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. It never fails. I said it never fails. Everybody who tries to serve God is a, a, in a way of trying to keep a code of conduct. Or, or I'm a, you know, I, I got my little religious creeds. And, uh, you know, I got my, my way of doing things. You in the flesh. Because the reality of it is you don't serve God in your own way. But I'm going to serve him the way that I know. No one in the Bible does God ask you what you think. Did you know that God's God not even said, let's make a deal? All right. God has said, this is the deal. Right. Either you come like this or you don't come at all. Hallelujah. Amen. So we do thank the Lord that, we're in a, that we are the beneficiaries. That's what we are. We're the benefactors. We're the beneficiaries of a covenant that God cut with his son. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus, I heard a brother teaching today, and I got so excited, I almost jumped into the computer listening to him. Like, well, I said, boy, you're picking my spirit. Hallelujah. He said, Jesus is the Israel of God. When God was talking to Abraham, he said, the seed of Abraham, not plural, but one seed. 
He says, Jesus is the real Israel of God. And that got all over me. So those of us that are in Christ, we are the Israel of God. Has nothing to do with your color. I know some of my Hebrew Israelites get mad with me. Uh, many, many of them think that they're in right standing with God just by virtue of being black. No. no. Not true. You're not, you're not in good standing with God because of your race. You're not in right standing with God because of any of your creeds, any of your traditions. You're in right standing with God because you're in Christ. I'm going to say it without apology. I'm going to say it without hesitation. There is no other way to God but through Christ Jesus. I want to make that clear. He's not one of many ways. He is the only way. He said in John 14, 6, y'all know the verse. He didn't say, I'm a, I'm a way and a truth and a life. He said, I am the He didn't use the indefinite article. He used the definite article. The, which means exclusivity. There's no other way. Hallelujah. I'm glad I'm in here, aren't you? I said, I'm glad I'm in here, aren't you? Hallelujah. All right, glory to God. So, so I want to make sure we go on through these works of the flesh. And as we do this, this ain't, this ain't time to look at your neighbor. We're going to look at ourselves. Amen. And ask the Lord, Lord, if any of these things in me, get them out of me. Because I don't want nothing between my soul and my Savior. Hallelujah. I want to, we're in right standing. We're not trying to live right to be right. right, right, right. We live right because we're right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Make that clear. Hallelujah. We're not trying to get victory. No, we, have we have victory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we pause. I just say thank you. Lord, I thank you because I feel and I sense the move of the Spirit here tonight. Hallelujah. I believe this is going to be a good night. Yeah. Hallelujah. God, I thank you for revelation knowledge. Let it fall in this room like rain. Hallelujah. We open our hearts and open our minds. Hallelujah. Tonight, Father, we have brought our brains and we brought our bodies. And right now, Lord, we open both of them. Holy Spirit, move. Oh, let revelation again flow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If Paul prayed for the church at Ephesus. He's out praying. Hallelujah. That the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened. So that you may be able to comprehend the height, the length, the breadth, and the width. That is all capacity. Amen. And to know the love of Christ that passes understanding. Lord, I thank you tonight that eyes are going to come open. That ears are opening. And I thank you, God, that hearts are receptive. And I thank you in advance in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He says, now works of the flesh are manifest. Galatians 5.19. Works of the flesh and manifest. Sister Gilda, you showed me something last week that was interesting. I want you to, those three categories. Yes. I want you to, uh, I want you to, uh, to, 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 to read that out to the church because, because what happens is this. Every one of these listings of the works of the flesh falls within one of these categories. Yes. That was a good study note in her Bible. I want you to read, Sister Gilda, read up those three categories right there. All right, did y'all hear that? All these, all these listings of the flesh, they fall in one of those categories. When you hear the word sensual, what do you think about? Sensual. But some sins with the body. By sensual, senses. Something that the body gets to get. When you, read, when you look at the first part of that, adultery, fornication, that's sensual sins. That sins that, that sins that's done with the body. And sometimes, you know, people, you know, well, I ain't committing adultery, I ain't doing fornication. So and these sins tend to be more obvious. And it's funny how sometimes people, we, we tend to categorize sin, you know, we, where, you know, I'm not doing anything open and obvious, so I ain't that bad. <laughs> you know, so we, so they, 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 they see, you know, I'm not, I ain't sleeping with nobody, but you're looking at it on your computer. I, you know, I, I'm not going to go. Jesus said, if you look at somebody, right, help me, Lord. Right. He said, if you look with desire, yeah. right. oh, nobody ain't built to that. Huh. Hallelujah. If you just look and want to, you ain't got to commit to act. Hallelujah. Jesus said, you had a full-blown fornication session in your mind. Right. Right. That's not a man walking nowhere that had, had never done that. Hallelujah. Now, ladies, you got your own thing, but I'm talking about us brothers. We have struggle with that Amen. because we tend to be visually oriented. Hallelujah. 
had a woman ask me, this was years ago, y'all, this is this ain't been recently, years ago, a woman asked me, what do I have to do to turn you on? I said, just show up. <laughs> she ain't got it. Girl, you ain't got to do that. Just show up. <laughs> Pastor, you said it. I wouldn't pass the thong, did you? <laughs> hallelujah. But I'm telling you, hallelujah, it's something, amen, it's something about it. It's visually, and, and we have to ask God, Lord, help my eyes. Amen. And help my mind. Hallelujah. How I many know we need the Lord? Yeah. I mean, did y'all know y'all see, see a good looking fella come along? And come on, y'all get off of me now. Right. You ain't dead, are you? Sometimes your mind will take you out there. Yeah. Especially if you're looking good and smelling good and yeah. looking you know, kind and affecting you know, you them. Lord help me. Hallelujah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So those are sick. That's the first category, right? Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I promise you, your first attraction, those of us that are married, that initial attraction was not spiritual. No, right. not. Right. <laughs> okay, I don't want to be real. I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, it was around November of 2018. Hallelujah. I messed around and said, well, uh, the end of October, the beginning of November, I messed around and just made a statement. I would love to meet a nice woman. All of a sudden, Sister Sarah sent me an inbox of a photograph of a woman. And I looked at that woman. I said, hallelujah. Of course, she probably listened, hey, baby. Hallelujah. I said, ain't no way in the world she could be saved. Lord, have mercy. I was scared, but, but, but my curiosity, hallelujah, overpowered my fear. All right, hallelujah. The initial attraction was not spiritual. All right, it was sensual. Amen. There's nothing wrong, hallelujah. Amen. There's nothing wrong with acknowledging somebody, okay, yeah, he looks good or she looks good. Nothing wrong with that. But can you leave it there? Right. It's, that, it's that second look that gets you. <laughs> Somebody says, yeah, the early bird gets the worm, yeah, but the second rat gets the cheese. <laughs> 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 Hallelujah. All right, get out of the Pastor Tom. All right, so the essential. What's that second category? Spiritual, right? Spiritual. Okay, so when you look at the spirit, now you're talking about idolatry and witchcraft. Those are spiritually motivated things. Things that we, that we, you start worshiping things, you get involved in activity that's, that's outside of the realm of Christ. Witchcraft, uh, idolatry, stuff of that nature. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we got sexual sins, you got spiritual sins. What's that, what's that last one? Social sins. Social not hatred. Hatred and variance and emulation. This is what we want to finish up here tonight. We talked about hatred. You know, these are sins, you know, they, 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 those sins, those works of the flesh, are the fuels of racism and why people can't get along, why, why the races, why, why these battles, hallelujah. I thought about the song, Love Has No Color, written by Marvin Winans back in 1987. Hallelujah. People, listen, there is something that we need to know. Too long we've been fighting racial wars that started long ago. Dear Lord, for us to grow, we must let go of what's been keeping us apart. Now is the time to put the past behind and together we'll make a brand new start. Why? Because love has no color. Right. Hallelujah. He says we got to learn how to love with our hearts and our eyes. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We know there's a difference in the colors of our skin. So, but 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 God didn't make us different. Amen. To, to be a part of discord. Hallelujah. Right. Amen. Think about a, 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 a bouquet of flowers. Hallelujah. It, it would be a dull bouquet if they were all the same color. Right. But but a beautiful bouquet of flowers have different colors. It's different flowers. Amen. But they all are contributing for the better, uh, to, for the, contributing for the beauty of the entire bouquet. Right. Are you listening to me? Amen. Hallelujah. So this is what God intends for us. Hallelujah. Amen. Instead of our differences being a bone of contention, we're not supposed to be, you know, we're not supposed to be contending against each other. But our differences is what should give us the ability to complement one another. Right. 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 Hallelujah. Right. You know, there's a difference in the color of our skin. But be proud of the heritage and learn from the lessons they give. God made us different for a reason. Of our differences speaks of the manifold wisdom of God. All right. I, I, that's true. You got to pay for that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So it, these are social things. So we got, and that, I mean, that co that, those three categories covers everything. Yes. Sensual, spiritual, social. Everything falls in those categories. Amen. Amen. Sometimes it's good to put things in categories to help you understand it better. 
Hallelujah. She read that note to me last night. I said, oh, I got to work that into the lesson. Well, that's good right there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we hatred variance. <clears throat> Hallelujah. This word, we told you this word variance. What do we say variance means? Very. Did we say what it meant? <laughs> this word, this word variance means contentious. Variance. To, to, it means quarrelsome. Did you know some people are just quarrelsome? They just love the argument. They just love they, 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 A lot of times they're not really looking for the truth. They just want to find somebody to fuss with. Now, if you want to make me get scared real quick, let me let, let me deal with you just long enough to see that you just got to fight the spirit. You're not really looking for the truth. You're just looking for an argument. Now, when I find out you're that kind of person, I'm going to dismiss myself. You ain't got to tell me to leave. I'm going to leave. Hallelujah. If I believe, I believe, this is what I believe, Sister Dana, never try to crowd a thought with every small brain. <laughs> the Bible says it this way. The proverb says, if you argue with a fool, you become one with it. Scripture also says, where there's no wood, the fire goes out. Right. Hallelujah. It, it, it's a fool that can argue with himself. Right. I ain't arguing with nobody. You know, I, I'll try to talk and reason. But once I understand you, your ears are closed to the voice of reason. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm not mother, mother, hallelujah, mother, Barbara, I'm not going to cast my pearls before swine. Isn't that what Jesus said? Yeah. Call it your swine. Well, no, you called yourself that. Hallelujah. All right, so that's, that's, that's that variance. Hallelujah. Uh, look at the word emulation. So all these words, and these days, these days got to work in tandem because this emulation has to do with rivalry in a bad sense. It has to do with uh, 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 also has to do with uh, it goes in, goes in conjunction and tandem with wrath. Hallelujah! Emulation speaks of being heated. Yes. Have you noticed how quick some folks get angry? Yes. Now, if you're the kind of person that you quick to anger, we got to pray about that. Yes. Quick to it's, it's hot. It's hot. The slightest thing sets you off. See, the Bible says anger rests. In the bosom of a fool. We can't be the kind of people that get angry or quit like that. You can't, in other words, as they say, you can't wear your feelings on your sleeve. Come on, y'all. We all got to be well, always stay where somebody can tell you something. None of us are above correction. Hallelujah. None of us are above learning. The day you stop learning is the day they throw dirt in your face. Hallelujah. So don't get into that contentious, hallelujah, spirit, amen, hallelujah, that's heated, um, <clears throat> zealous, over, zealous in a, in a negative way. You know, hallelujah, that, that, that emulation there. I don't get into that. Then, of course, wrath, that wrath, that's, that's, that wrath is different from anger. Did you know anger in and of itself is not sin? Did you know it's not a sin to get angry? Did y'all know that? Did you know sometimes it's good? Did you know some, did you know that some anger is justified? <laughs> some things ought to set you off. Hallelujah. Did you know when Jesus went in the temple and drove them rats out and overturned them tables? Can I tell you he didn't have a smile on his face when he did? <laughs> can I tell you Jesus was he, mother, when he went in there? Hallelujah. When he turned up, he took those cords and braided them together, hallelujah, and started striking them, scattering them, them rascals in the back. And, I promise you, he wasn't nice about it. Get this stuff out of here. Get that stuff off the table. Hallelujah. You, 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 you bunch of thieves. My father's house shall be called a house of prayer. I'm going to tell you what the right teaching does. Hallelujah. What Jesus did with a whip. Hallelujah. We do it today with a sword. Because the right teaching will overturn table. I mean, the table speaks of a place of administration. Yeah. Table speaks of a place of ministry. Some ministers need to be overturned. Yes, sir. And the right teaching will turn over tables. Yes. Oh, I hope I pray every Sunday I come in here. Every Sunday a table get turned over. Yes. Hallelujah. I don't mind if somebody leaves sometime a little heated at me. That means I've done something right. Everybody ain't supposed to be glad. I've left church. I've left church mad with pastors before. I've left. I've left. I, I, I didn't let him know, but many times, especially my early, my when I was an experienced camper, I left the church several, a few times, kind of upset with that boy. 
you know, he didn't know. I, was, I guess he didn't know. I, you know, I tried to camouflage the best I could. Hallelujah. But I tell you one thing about it. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's, it's anger, but it's good. Sometimes you ponder. Why are you, why are you mad with him? Go back and think about what he said. Hallelujah. And once you, once, you, once you take that thought about what he said, I said, you know what? The man was right. The truth is tough sometimes. Did y'all know the truth is brutal? That's why God had to kiss it with mercy because truth is brutal, man. <laughs> truth don't care what you think. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Justice demanded death. That's why God took the whole up justice. Wait a minute. I know they're guilty. I know. Wages of sin is death. I know it. Every, every last one of them deserve to be fried. I, I get it. He says, but I'm going to take my justice and I'm going to temper it with mercy. I'm going to take truth and I'm going to kiss it with mercy, with justice. With, I'm going to kiss it with mercy. I'm going to let grace and mercy, which are the Siamese twins of God. Say grace. grace. Keeps me, Keeps me. From, getting from getting what I deserve. What I, deserve. I say that back. Say, let's run that back. Say grace. Grace. Gives me, gives me what I don't deserve. I don't deserve. Say mercy, mercy keeps, me keeps me from getting from what I do deserve. I do deserve. Hallelujah. Yeah. See, mercy is preventative, but grace is giving. Yeah. But we need both of them. Yeah. And grace and mercy are the sign of these twins of God. They joined at the gift. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank yeah. God. I got grace and mercy both pleading my case. Because sometimes y'all may not realize it, but sometimes I'm a mess. Mm hmm. And I believe I got some company in this house tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah. Sometimes we get a little we get a little beside ourselves. So thank God for grace and mercy. Come on, say I'm a work in grace. Hallelujah. Say God's working on me. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, be patient with me. God ain't through with me yet. Hallelujah. I'm a work in progress. I tell you what, I'm not what I used to be. I'm not yet all I'm sure I should be. But thank God I'm not what I used to be. Hallelujah. Pastor Tom, somebody said, Pastor Tom, I want you to pray for me because I'm struggling. I start shouting, Hallelujah. Why are you I told you I'm struggling. Why are you shouting? Because struggle is the sign of progress. Say, say struggle is evidence of progress. Hallelujah. Struggle means you're getting somewhere. If you ain't struggling, that means you ain't progressing. Right. Hallelujah. And the Lord told that man, man, hallelujah. There was a man that showed up at the church, showed up at the meeting where they had a withered hand. Yeah. Jesus said, oh, hang on. Hey, come here. Man, come up there. He said, stretch forth that hand. He couldn't do it. But he had to make forth an effort. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because the Lord told me, he said, son, I, he said, I told the man to do something that was physically impossible. So I can show my possibility in the midst of impossibility. All right, all right. When that man began to stretch, he told me, he said, son, tell him that the miracle is in the stretch. Yeah. <laughs> and hallelujah. The miracle, uh, he, I said, the miracle is in the stretch. Hallelujah. Yeah. And the strength is in the struggle. I'm trying to just teach him, but y'all push him into that. There's a strength in the struggle. It is. So that's why that songwriter said, how I got over a soul looks back and wonder. Sometimes you come out of stuff, you don't know how you got out. All I know, Mr. Solomon, one day I was in it, the next day I'm out. I, don't, I can't explain it. I don't know how it happened. All I know is one word, God. Excuse me, two words, but God. That's how I got out. I didn't do it because I was slick. Oh, I sure was lucky. No, you wasn't. You ain't nobody in the world that lucky. Come through stuff that should have killed you. You come to all of us have been in stuff that should have left us mentally deranged. But you come out of stuff and, it, and you and you come out with your mind intact. That's the that's the twins. That's the twins at work. Grace and mercy. Hallelujah. David called them by another name in Psalm 23. He said, Surely goodness and mercy. That's that's the same, same thing. He said, They shall they they they, they follow me. Hallelujah. They're, they're in hot pursuit of me. The Hebrew, that's the word chassid. It means something, it means a, 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 an attribute of God that's unexplainable. It's, it's just goodness and mercy. I got two attributes of God that are in constant hot pursuit of me. I don't care what y'all say. That's good right here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we, so, so these works of the flesh and God's, God's working on all of us. 
You know you're not what you used to be. Thank God for that. Strife, you know what strife is? Oh, boy. Hallelujah. The Bible says what well, envy and strife is, that's where you find every evil word. I guarantee any, any trouble you find anywhere, I guarantee there's some strife at the root of it. Hallelujah. Strife. Hallelujah. Rivalry. Hallelujah. There's this, this rivalry and strife. Hallelujah. The spirit of strife, hallelujah, will cause you to make an enemy out of somebody who's trying to be your friend. Hallelujah. Strife. Hallelujah. There's, there's Greek lexicon says it's the desire to put oneself forward. There's Greek lexicon says it's a partisan and a fractious spirit. Strife is that spirit that creates cliques. And put a pen in this. Anytime you see a clique spirit in the church, that's some strife in that so Because there shouldn't be no cliques nowhere in here. I said it shouldn't be a clique. So if you find a clique in the church, that's a spirit of strife in there somewhere. The enemy has got he's got a foothold in there somewhere. Can you say amen? All right. Hallelujah. These are works of the flesh. This, this, again, these are the things that begin to manifest. He said, our works of the flesh are manifest. These are the things that will begin to come forward when we, when we abandon God's way. When we abandon God's prescribed order. Hallelujah. It gives rise to the works of the flesh. We, we find ourselves doing stuff that we need to be getting away from. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's move on. Hallelujah. We're in Galatians 5, the last part of verse 20. Seditions. Oh, my. That, you see, all, again, a lot of these words are synonyms for the word that you just read. Dissensions. Dissension speaks of, again, that click. It's the word disunity. Hey, this, come on, say a dissension. It's the spirit that fights unity. I want that to soak in. A dissentious person, because you got you got some people have a personality of dissension. Time they come around, you just it's like the air just leave the building. Some folks carry that dissentious presence. Am I right about it? They got a dissentious presence. Time they come around, it's like like you have a hard time breathing. Because they got that spirit. They got a presence that is that, that they, even their presence, they, they are, they're in such cohort that they, they, they're in cohorts with demon spirits. That their very presence serves as a portal to demonic activity. Oh, that person. Don't let it be in here, Lord. Hallelujah. Dissension, just disagreeable. I don't care what you're talking about. They don't, I ain't for it. Can't even get them to agree what color the rug ought to be. Why they order brown? I want it green. And they don't order green. When they got green for they should have got brown. They, they, they just they just say, don't please them. They got my mom serious. I, I don't care what you do. Hallelujah. I had a fellow in my church years ago that had a dissentious spirit. Years ago, a long time ago. He had a dissentious spirit. And I watched him. Because the Lord said, watch him. Hallelujah. God, here's what the Lord told me. He said, you ain't not put him out. I'm going to put him out. God said, he's going to leave on his own. He said, but you have to stand your ground. And I saw that spirit as it tried to weave its way through the board members. <sighs> tried to weave its way through. <laughs> but thank God, hallelujah. They said, watch this. I love it because this is what I love about it, y'all. Ooh, this is so good. I, 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 it feels so good. I can't hardly see it. I can, I can see it. I can see it in the tongue. I'm trying to get it right here. Hallelujah. This is what I love about Prophet Israel name. Hallelujah. When that spirit, oh, God help me. The pastor ain't the only one that God to give eyes to. Because here's, here's what I'm saying. I didn't have to call none of the other board members to the side. Why? Because they saw it too. Yeah, right, yeah. Right, right. And one of the brothers come and said, Pastor Top, he's I'm with you. Okay. Right. He said, I see it. Mm -hmm. huh. now, now here's the thing about it now. He and this, he and this particular young, this particular man, they were friends for years. 
but with his, watch this, that, but with his eyes come open to who this brother really was, he, uh, he learned that he was being manipulated. When his eyes, see, sometimes you got to wait. Because sometimes if you come in there prematurely, you won't be perceived as the enemy. So you got to let God open eyes. Because he that is convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. So you got to wait to let God open the eyes. God opened his brother's eyes. He said, all these years, this joke was using me to get to, to work to get his agenda across. He was using my position as a board member. Let me help you somebody. Hallelujah. If you've got any kind of position of influence, oh, please hear me. If you, if you forget everything else I told you at this point, don't forget this. If you have any kind of position of influence, be careful who you let be close to you. Because some people will try to use your influence to get their agenda across. <clears throat> That's the spirit of Jezebel. That's nothing to do with gender. Jezebel, you understand, was married to King Ahab. Watch this. She wasn't the king, but she was married to one. She wasn't in the garden, but she was in covenant with somebody who was. That person. That's what I'm going to tell you. God didn't ordain they were covenant. Boy, I don't know where this coming from, but this is the Holy Ghost here. God, God didn't ordain every, every, every covenantal agreement is not of God. Jezebel used her position as his wife. Yeah, yeah. He's the king. He got authority. Yeah. Hallelujah. Right. Probably, she probably worked on it that night. Probably, probably used pillow talk. Yeah. Come on, brothers. Come on, pull it in. You pull it. <laughs> Run, running her fingers through his hair or through his scalp, whatever you want. <laughs> Baby, you know I love you. Yeah, I love you. you need to do something about toe hair. Toe hair, toe hair, my man. He's my man. I don't like it. You know, laying in the bed, I'm telling you know, Baby, you sleep. Disguise the spirituality. I just, you know, I, I, I just feel in my spirit that you need to keep your eye on toenail, cause you know, uh, cause he, and the reason why, cause he toenail see something about you. You can have everybody else know, but toenail see. So this man was trying to use the board members against me, but God opened our eyes. After he saw, watch this, after he saw he wasn't going to get his way, all of a sudden, a miracle happened. He stands up in service at the end of one Sunday morning service, about two or three weeks later, and says, hey, brothers and sisters, the Lord has spoken to me, and he's leading me to go to another church. I want to run to the door. Oh, no. I wanted to get that brother the left foot of fellowship. Excuse me, brother, excuse me. No. I wanted to escort him. Say, move us, I got this one. Hallelujah. The Lord is leading me and my wife, and he looked, bless her, bless her heart. I could see the look on her face. She wanted to crawl under the pew. She didn't know he was going to do that. Because she didn't want to go. She didn't want to go. But she was in covenant with him, and oh, Lord. And they left. They did. I fell behind the pulpit one Sunday morning praying for him after I finished. It, it, it was so hard. You know, it got to the point where every Sunday morning he was sending his spirit out at me. And I was praying. I, after, after I concluded one of my messages one Sunday, I fell behind the pulpit and was praying. And y'all can believe this. You can, you can accept it, but I'm just going to submit it just like it happened. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, Don't call this name to me again. Oh, Jesus. I had to look around and see what's 
somebody say it was just that it, it, it was just that audible to me. God said, Don't call his name to me again. Isn't that, isn't that strange? And when I heard those words, it's like a brother Bob is like a thousand pounds come up off my shoulder. I knew it was out of my head. And then like I said, the two or three weeks later, he stood up and made an announcement. We fixed to leave. Couple of years and they had left, which went, 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 went and became somebody else's problem. But anyway, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> but 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 uh, several years later, I heard he he died a horrible death. He fell off of a ladder and was impaled, pipe on the ground, went all the way through. Broke my heart when I heard it. I haven't seen it yet, but then so, uh, I heard, heard that heard that happen. The other day, well, I said the other day, it's been a couple months, several months ago, I'm walking through the food line, <clears throat> trying to get me and Queen some ham hocks for our lima beans. <laughs> Hallelujah. That lima bean anointing got on me that day. And Queen said, you go get the hocks and I'll take care of old baby. He said, I'm going it. <laughs> so I went down there and I ran into his widow. Sweet low. Pastor Tom, you still pastor? Yes. Where's your church? I told her we'll be located. I hadn't seen it yet. But if you see a little, if you see a little woman, she's about four foot eight. <laughs> a little small, petite, little older, Caucasian woman, sweet as a sweetheart. But if you see her walk in here, you're gonna remember this story. What I just told you. Because I knew it wasn't her. I knew who it was. I knew I knew. Lord told me to hold peace. You say that? God said, You ain't got to fight. You ain't got to put him out. I'm going to put him out. Sometimes we're trying to hold on to stuff. We got to let go. Oh, it was so rough. That man threatened to call the sheriff on me because I'm trying to do the, I'm trying to take the church where God wanted the church to go. We don't do it that way here. We, we're a board run church. You pass, you just preach. We handle the business. That ain't gonna work. No, that ain't gonna work. You ain't gonna control me. Oh no, oh no. But anyway, let's get out of that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Flesh. That's what it is. It's flesh. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Heresies. Heresy. You know, just put this simple. I think we got into some of this the last time. But heresy is simply an opinion, another opinion other than God's word. That's Harris. I don't care where it came from. It could be your bishop. It could be your headquarters. Any opinion that's not in harmony with Scripture, God calls it Harris. It's heretical in its nature. Hallelujah. I love this. It says, Harris in the Greek is a choice or an option. A religious sect, S E C T, a faction that creates. Discord also has dogma or doctrine. And I love the way the Thayer says. Thayer says it's a choice that creates this union. A sect. It has something choosing. So you tell me I got to be careful about my choices? Yes. Because if you choose if you even when it comes, sometimes sometimes we get in, we get into what I call personal heresy, because anytime you espouse an opinion to your own personal life that's not in harmony with God's will for your life, you, ma'am or sir, is participating in personal heresy. Woo, that's strong, isn't it? I, I never seen it like that before. Hallelujah! You have you, have, you Hallelujah! You get a second thought. You be the genius in your family. Hallelujah. So I can say amen. amen. People follow their own opinion. Well, I know the Bible say that, but oh, look out. See, when, when, when anytime you hear somebody say something like that, I know the Bible says that, but anytime you hear the word but, your flag of heresy ought to go out right then. Yeah. Hallelujah. Years ago, there was a pastor in this town. I don't call no name because it ain't necessary. And besides, that pastor's going on to be with the Lord anyway. I don't wherever he or she went. Hallelujah. This particular pastor, this 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 man, they was they was 
that this man had a wife, and this pastor, she was known for saying, I know he may be married to her, but the Lord has shown me that he's really mine. Oh, so now God is ordained in adultery, huh? Yeah, he, he married her, but they, they, they married outside of God's will. Says who? You? That's your flesh talking, girl. Hey, Holy Ghost ain't telling you that. He married her, but the Lord, the Lord, the Lord has shown me that he's really mine. You would be surprised. Why do you think Abraham ended up with Hagar? Mm -hmm. That was heresy. He went down to Egypt. Uh oh. Thinks he had no business going. You know, I love, I love, I, I, I love the terminology when you when you study Abraham's journey. Hallelujah! Every time Abraham went down to a place, he always, always got in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> down. Lord, be careful about. I know they talk about the southern was pretty bad. Oh, y'all crazy down there. <laughs> anytime you, anytime you go away from God's prescribed order, you are you are descending. You are you are traveling in a downward spiral. Are y'all still in here with me now? Yeah. Hallelujah, glory to God. All right, He says, Indians, Hallelujah, murderers. I'm in verse twenty-one. Now, Indians, what is envy? Walk with somebody else, guy. Hallelujah. Ill will. And it, it's funny to me because sometimes, it, sometimes it even work this way. Sometimes they don't necessarily want it. They just don't want you to have it. Isn't that crazy? I don't want it, but I, how you end up with it? Well, what did you do to get it? Envy. The Bible says envy is like cancer. It's Scripture also said envy is cruel. It's cruel as the grave. And it's rotten to the bone. It's like cat it eats at you. People get so full of envy they can't even sleep. They worry about you. How, how you how you got what you got. <laughs> There's a very fine line between envy and jealousy. They're not exactly the same. Hallelujah. You know, what, what, did, did you know the Bible says God is a jealous God? Yeah. You can tell me God is evil. No, that's no. So we got to understand what jealousy is. Jealousy basically works like this. Something that's rightfully yours, but somebody that's trying to mess with it. That's jealous. My wife and I have a covenant that somebody trying to mess with her. You want to arouse pastor's jealousy. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you want to arouse my jealousy. I don't need you trying to push up on what's mine. Come on. I don't want to be angry. Why not? So I'm trying to mess with yours. Hallelujah. You got a right to have some anger about that. I'm not telling you, I'm not telling you to get a gun and go kill them. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm not telling you to, you know, kill them and then just tell God they died. You know, I'm, not, I'm not endorsing that. But I am saying that you got a right to feel. Tell you, tell you to stop feeling. I'm not going to tell you to quit being human. Because right. you have to be dead and not have feelings. Right. I don't know why we think people ain't supposed to feel when injustice is done. Right. You do me wrong. I'm supposed, I'm supposed to smile about it. No. You step on my toe and I ain't supposed to holler. That's my foot down there. Get off. <laughs> step on my foot. Hallelujah. So you go around. I got my 13 out there. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, glory to God, man. I'm being fun. I'm just trying to help you to see something here. Hallelujah. In this murders. Murderers. Lord have mercy. Murders. What is murder? What is that? Say murder is different from killing somebody. Oh. Murder is to have malice. Murder is something done in with intent. Intentionally. Ill will. You got folk, you got murderers who have never picked up a gun. Murderers 
Never pick up a knife. But I can't stand you. Sick of her. And she ain't done nothing to you. But you got every time they come on, your face all tore up. Looking like death sucking on a lifesaver. Looking like you've been baptized in dill pickle juice. They all flaring up. You got the spirit of murder in you. The Bible says you hate your brother without a cause. You're murder. That's what Jesus said. See, that, that's what Jesus cut it because see, 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 the scribes and Pharisees, they were so concerned about the letter of the law that Jesus told them about the heart of it. I know you've heard it said, thou shalt not kill. Yeah. He said, but I'm telling you that if you hate your brother without a cause, you're a murderer. Lord, have mercy. Cold-blooded murder. Hallelujah. Amen. I said amen. amen. Hallelujah. It's murder. Drunkenness. You don't have to explain what drunkenness is. I don't know. Well, you know, it's all right for a person to have a drink every now and then. I believe. Now, you, you take it how you want to take it. I'm going to have a little wine with my sin. I have iced tea with mine. <laughs> See, because I know where I came from. All right. All right. I can't miss that grief. Because I know where I came from. Amen. Some people, some people, uh, they have they have what is what is psychologically psychologically called an addictive nature. Right. Some folks can't drink socially. Amen. 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 Now, I, my counsel is to stay away from the stuff all together. That's my counsel. Yeah, yeah. I'm a teetotaler. I don't, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't even want to take a knife when I'm sick. <laughs> you know, my dad would take him a little toddy every night before he went to sleep. Dad was on a drum. Right, right. But, he would, but he, would, he would get him a little, 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 little four-ounce shot of Mogan David. Back in the day, we called it Mad Dog. Mad Dog. If you stayed with it too long, you would become a mad dog. <laughs> but he would have that mad dog. You know, that's, what, that's, what, that's what a lot of the Orthodox churches use for their communion. They use MD, Mogan Baby. You all know that? Okay. Yeah. Hallelujah. We use grape juice. Because <laughs> ain't no way in the world y'all won't convince me that Jesus took water and turned it into fermented wine. I just won't believe it. That, that's my personal preference. I ain't gonna fight you about it. You ain't gonna change my mind about it. I probably ain't gonna change yours. I just won't think Jesus took that water and turned it into wild Irish rose. I don't think he did. I just don't think he did. Boom, farm. Everybody just farm. I just don't think Jesus did that. I think he turned it into great juice. He said, I don't drink no more fruit of the vine. I grew up in a church we use water for communion. I ain't mad, but personally, I think they use grape juice. Yeah. He said, fruit of the vine, and not fruit of the pipes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want it tonight. Hallelujah. All right. Let's keep that on. All right. Drunkenness. Think about how many homes have been torn up because of alcohol. That's right. That's right. Think about how many, think about it. That alcohol people to get a hold of folks and get them all out of it. He, whatever. I had an uncle when he wasn't drinking, you wouldn't even know he was at the house. His head was in a book. He was he was he was an avid, voracious reader, but he did a little bit of that jack in it. Ooh, Lord, that first. Did he ever get a red box and jump on Mr. Hyde? He did a few, he did a, he did a little bit of that old naughty head in it. And his head would get naughty. I remember one day I had to throw him out the house. Yeah. My own uncle I had to grab him by the seat of his pants, but it wasn't too much. He wasn't that to him anyway, because he was drunk. He couldn't beat his guy with a wet paper sack. <laughs> Hallelujah. He got mom upset, and she told him to leave, and he told her, I ain't going, I ain't going nowhere, so you getting out of here. <laughs> and I grabbed him, put him in the air, and I carried him out <laughs> and, and, and politely laid him. <laughs> laid him in the backyard. <laughs> I laid him out 
Prophet is the name that back down, Sister Sarah. Yep. And I put all this on him. <laughs> and he couldn't move. He got in there grunting. <sighs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you feel strong, you? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you got my mama upset, man. You know, you're going to get, you get, get out of here. Hallelujah. But, but tonight, but when he was sober, one of the nicest fellas you would want to be around. Sweet, eating, with mild manner, even tempered, but Lord have mercy. That's why you know it's a demon attached to that stuff. And then the world gives it a pass. They say, I, I call it, that's a sickness. No, it's not a sickness. No. Well, you know, when a person drinks a lot, then that, they, they, they go, you know, after a period of time, uh, they, they, they start talking about neuro, they, they try to bring neurology in it, you know, and how the brain is reshaped. Well, what caused the reshaping? That spirit, because the spirit, how anything we anything we invite into our body, we prepare ourselves mentally, psychologically, amen, to yield whatever, yield whatever spirit that substance is carrying. Drunkenness. Oh, have tore up so many homes, have wrecked so many families, many children, amen, hallelujah, have been, hallelujah, this is put out and Hallelujah. Men and women have just, they've lost their homes because the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, who hath contention? Who hath woe? Who hath wounds without cause? Who hath redness of eyes? He said, they that tarry long at the wine. That's what the Bible says. Amen. I'm so grateful to the Lord that he delivered me from that. Drunkenness. What's the next one? Revelings? Revelry or revelings? What is reveling? Fighting. There's, a, there's another connotation here also. But when I look up, I'm going to pull up the Thayer's Greek lexicon. Thayer said that, that revelry, it means a, to just carouse. Ah, hey. It's just crazy. Oh, come on now. Come on out here, shake your thing. Party. Some folks just live for the next party. I'm going to the club. Uh oh. I'm going to go get down. You said it. This word, it, 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 it is hallelujah. The, long, the, the, the scale of anyway, is comos. It needs to let loose. <laughs> hallelujah. I think KC and the Sunshine Band back in the day, they sang a song that, that gave rise to that carousal, that reveling spirit. Do a little dance, make a little love, get down tonight, get down tonight. Oh, y'all too much. Oh, come on, y'all, y'all ain't gonna say that long. Come on. Revel, it's just, this, and, 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 and it's interesting because it, when Paul used this word, he was Paul was actually in reference of a of a of a, of a, of a demonic deity named Bacchus and his music, and they would burn torches. You remember that stuff that happened? What was it? Was it South Carolina? They started burning those tiki torches. Come on, that's what gave rise. That after that, after that event, it gave rise to the Black Lives Matter movement. But they were. They were, they were burning torches, and they, they got people that was that were just they, they stirred the crowd. See, some folks know how to work a crowd. They know how to stir up things. They know how to set it off. I'm going to, I'm going to set it off. Right. Pastor Sam Sellers told me, he went off, he listened. You know, but before Upper Room became Upper Room. Up a room was a place called Magic, right? Yeah. Pastor Seller said back in the day there was a song called Tell the Club of It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said, man, they start playing that song, and folks, <laughs> he said, folks start jumping up on the table, throwing chairs, and he said, hey, hey! <laughs> Get out of there, because he said, I'm going to say it at night. 
I'm a fire to his deliverance. Hallelujah. Terry, why would you have a song called Terry Club? Let me ask you a question. What kind of behavior do you think that would elicit in a person who listens to it? What do you think they would try to do? Turn the roof off. Hallelujah. <laughs> I heard Chief Craig Lewis do some teaching uh, back, back early years ago. He said that the Lord spoke to him back in the late 1970s. He said that, that, that a genre of music was coming out that's going to bring a whole wave of demonic activity. He said, Lord, what is it? He says it's called hip hop. That was no hip hop in the 70s. He said, but when the, he says that the 1980s was getting ready to come in, he said the Lord took him out the spirit and showed him how hip hop mixed with another genre we call rap. He says that, that this music would, would usher in a type of, of demonic entities. He says that what happens is young, young men particularly, there's something about the syncopated sound of the deep bass drum. Boom, boom, boom. And can't you feel the, can't you feel the grief? Come on. Because there was a time I used to love it back, back in my BC days, prior to my deliverance. But now when I hear that old drop, boom, boom, it grieves my spirit now. That's why I used to listen to this stuff. And now I hear it that because, because now I'm, hallelujah, it's on a different spirit. He said, and the Lord told him, he said, young men would ride on, because what, what, what could get into the mind of a person to, go, to walk up to a perfectly, uh, a, a complete stranger and pull a gun out and blow heads and just blow them away? Gang initiation. He said, they're going to listen to that music. He says, in about 10 minutes listening to that music, they'll be able to kill their own mom. Because it takes sensibility away. It takes away inhibition. That, he said that music that 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 certain 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 sound. Because I knew back in the back in the 70s, some of these they, they did with a lot, a lot of your hard rock groups did what they call back masking. When you play some of those records backwards, it, you would be shocked as to the lyrical content when you when you took that record and spun it backwards. So now we got these, so when that begin to come out, now you got a guy, he got two turntables. <laughs> Spin it back. <laughs> he said, that, all that stuff, he, the, the, he said that the Lord told him, it's coming, son. He said, and then the Lord told him, prepare my people. G. Craig Lewis. Find him on YouTube and listen to some of this stuff. G. Craig Lewis. Hallelujah. If you don't have it by tomorrow, I'll send you some links. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's, the, that's, this, that's this rebel. That's, that's, that's this spirit. That's this spirit. He says, and such like. Envious, murderous, drunkenness, revelers, and such like. Which means this is not a exhaustive list. In other words, this is not an all-inclusive list here. This is just some of the things that contains those three categories. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us to love not the world and the things that are in the world, right? First John. He says, for all that is in the world is what? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. How many categories is that? Just to get rid of three categories. All them fall, it's all in flesh. And the Bible says those that do these things, those that practice. Let's this, this conclude verse 21. And such like, of which I tell you before, as, all, as I have also told you in time past, that they which what? It's practice. It's not, watch this. Practice has to do with a continual lifestyle. Practice has to do with, watch this. Practice has to do with sustained activity. Because all of us get into isolated incidents of home doing. And the Lord brings us back. I'm not too bad. But then there, but then there are some people that sustain ongoing. In other words, when sin becomes your lifestyle, did you really get saved? I'm saved, but you're still in a lifestyle of sin. Now I'm not now people don't get into bondage because we all have our different struggles. 
But here's the good thing. And you notice know, you know I said what? what? Different what? Struggle. What did I say what well, about struggle? The struggle is proof that your spirit is out and operating. Because the day you quit struggling and just give in, uh oh, now you're in trouble. As long as you struggle, as long as, you, as long as there's something like this, as long as there's something inside of you that can't sin, even though I may be doing it. But Lord, I don't want to do it. I want out. Some stuff you cry over. Lord, I want, I want out of this. I don't want to keep doing this. Why do I keep finding out? That's what, that, 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 that's what Paul was talking about when we did Romans chapter 7. That's what he's talking about. He said, I see another law in my members. Warring against the law of my mind. The law, the law of the mind is willpower. That ain't what I want to do. But why do I keep finding myself doing what I don't want to do? Because there's a war in my members. There's something in my members. Notice he didn't say it's of my members. It's in my members. Because we're still in this flesh, y'all. I, I said we're still in the flesh. Hallelujah. We're still in these bodies. And the struggle is going to continue to the Lord take you out of here. But I'm glad to tell you that the struggle gets easy. I said it gets easy. Yes. There will, you, will, you will begin to see that victory manifest. Hallelujah. As we learn how to cooperate with God, as we learn how to cooperate with God's flow, and then with his, with his process of grace and mercy, that grace, hallelujah. The Bible says, count it all joy. James chapter 1, verse 2, y'all know it. Hallelujah. James says, count it all joy, not if, but when. When you encounter different, diverse kinds of trials, he said, kind of joyful because the trial is part of your growth. Yes. Yes. He says, knowing this, this is how this is how this is how you can kind of joy. He says, kind of all joy when you're falling on all kind of trials. Don't stop there. If you just stop there, the depression. You got to go on to verse four now. Knowing this, yes. there's something you got to know why you're struggling. You got to know that the trial of your faith yes. works with patience, yes. and then you got to let patience or perseverance have its what kind of work. Perfect. Perfect. That don't mean flawless. It means maturing. Let patience have its full effect. Hallelujah. Let it do what it's designed to do. Let perseverance have its full effect. Hallelujah. Something about that trial that God is strengthening your spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Frederick Douglass said, hallelujah, at the eve of the Civil War, Frederick Douglass lived to see Abraham Lincoln elected into the presidency. And, he, and, and, and Frederick Douglass penned these words. He said, where, where there is no struggle, there is no progress. Right. Hallelujah. Say that back in 1862 or 63. Hallelujah. He said, where there is no struggle, show me somebody who ain't struggling, I'll show you somebody who ain't progressing. Right. Don't let nobody look down on you because you struggle. In this church, you will never be looked down upon by this pastor because you're struggling. Because I know, so I got, I understand. Struggle is part of this proof of progress. Yes. Now, when you stop struggling and just start caving, now we now need to grab a hold of it. Because whenever you stop struggling, that means now you just give it in. I just quit. No, I ain't gonna quit in you. I said it ain't gonna quit in you. I don't care if you fall seven times a day, just get up here. The Bible says the righteous fall how many times? Yes. Seven times. But he rises up again. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Not a shame to fall down. It's a shame to stay down. Not a shame to be wrong. It's a shame to stay wrong. Are well, you getting it yet? Hallelujah. This is what this is talking about. Get up, brush yourself off, and move on. I may, I may go another 10 feet and fall again, but guess what? I didn't fall in the same spot. I fell, I fell again, Pastor. Yeah, but where were you? I, I, was, I was falling down the road. Okay, that's progress. Get up. Let's off again. Hallelujah. Go again. Don't you get stuck. Oh, you're listening to me. Don't you get stuck in a ditch now, and I come along and pull you out with my F-150 out there. Hallelujah. Come pull you out in a ditch, and the time I get you out in a ditch, you put your car in reverse and go right back in the same ball. Why would you do that? You may go up the road and get stuck again, but at least you're not in the same hole. Oh, have mercy. That's the point I'm trying to make. 
How would you feel? You burn your gas, put the strain on your transmission, spinning your tires. Hallelujah. I'm out of the pouring rain. You got your chain, you getting wet, soaking wet. Hallelujah. Tying one chain to the bump of their car. Tying it to the bump of your car. You get back in your car. Hallelujah. And you holler, give me some gas. Hallelujah. And we pull you out. The time I get you out. Watch this. The time I get out and unhook my chain. And unhook your chain. Hallelujah. And the time I get back in my truck, I'm sitting in my rear view mirror watching you back up right back into the same hole. Huh? How would that make you feel? And I'm soaking wet watching you back up. Done lost time, done spent energy that I should have spent doing something else. Done call my wife, and I'll be home in a minute. Um, I got the head told me I'll get out of this ditch. Now, I've been pulling, I, I may do it. Listen to me, listen to me. Listen to me, listen to me. now, don't you try the patience of your pastor. Hallelujah. Try Jesus, don't try me. Hallelujah. Watch this. I may get out. Pouring rain. Are you, are, you, are you getting my analogy? Yes. Why did you get my oh, I'm, I'm going, watch this. I'm going to assume I'm, I doubt but I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to, I'm going to make myself think that you didn't mean that you didn't mean to put your car in the race. Because you know some folks match the gas if they can't match the race. So, so I'm going to assume. I'm a doubt, but I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Okay, you might have slipped up and put the car. Okay, all right. All right, hook up. Let's try it again. All right. I'm going to hook back up till you get it. All right. When I tell you, all right, give us some gas. You come out again. Hallelujah. Now, if you back up again. Back up again. You back up again. You probably just stuck. Now. You stuck. Well, I really need to get where I'm trying to go. But I'll tell you what, leave your car, come get in here. Well, I ain't coming back out there. I may not leave you side the road, but I'm going to leave your car. Everybody hold it. Catch that. Catch that. Catch it now. Catch it. I'm going to catch that, but there's a lesson in there. I'm going to get you. I'm going to retrieve you. But I'm going to leave your car. I don't pull it out twice, three times, maybe. So the next time, I ain't gonna leave you stranded, but I'm gonna leave you a car. Cause something wrong with your car. I don't know why that car keep putting itself in the roof. I don't know why. I guess on your on your on your column, on your gear column, the R and the D is mixed up. Are y'all listening to me? I got to quit and I don't want to. This thing is not good to me, you know? Hallelujah. So what I'm saying is, hallelujah, is that these are works of the flesh. And, and, and watch this. None of us, please hear this. None of us are above this. And a lot of times I love, I, I, sometimes I just love to talk about the fact, well, I've been in the Lord now for 41 years. That don't mean I've mastered anything. Because I understand I need him just as much now as I needed him then. And I know without the touch of mercy and grace right now, I would put my car in reverse. <laughs> and sit there and went on some kind hearted soul. You do not need car, hook me, change your mind. Let me tell you something, family. Everybody ain't gonna stop for you. And guess what? You are watch it, this this gonna blow your mind. You ain't not gonna write getting mad. If they don't stop. Especially if you're the one that you don't got yourself stuck. Boy, I don't like that dude. I, I put myself, I, I did it. I heard people say, that. I, I did it. I put myself in this. I did it. I, okay, you, okay, that's, okay, that's, that's, okay, good knowledge. Yeah, okay, that, that's progress. Okay, good. I can work with that. What you can work with is that people who aren't even acknowledged. I don't know what happened. Amen. I was driving and the car just went over there. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I, I, I was doing everything I knew to do. And all of a sudden, bam, I'm stuck. <laughs> no, babe. That's not a manufacturer's defect. Sometimes.
time you can't blame the manufacturer of cultural car stuff. That's right. God wants y'all to hear this now. Amen. Hallelujah. Did you know the manufacturer's warranty will only work if you follow certain principles? Did you know that there's certain things that if you go outside, if you do something you haven't been doing, it voids the manufacturer's warranty. If you go by, I'm closing. You go by an, elect an electrical device, hallelujah, and, and hallelujah, the first thing they tell you on the box, it's written on the box, and I, and I disobey it all the time. Oh, y'all pray for me. There's, there's a statement on the box that says, do not attempt to operate this product until you read the manual. That's what I'm going to do. I just tell the box, I'll just, go to, just, take it, just put the toast on the, on the counter. I'll never read it, but the, the, uh, I, I don't. Lord, forgive me. I don't read the manual. This is the manual. You got to this is the manual? Did you know this is not a religious book? Did you know this is the operator's manual? Do not attempt to operate your life without the manual. Because if you attempt to operate the device without the manual, you will avoid the manufacturer's warranty. Oh, boy, that's right. <laughs> but you know, that's, that's where grace and mercy come in at. Because God can leave us in our mess and be right. He could. He can leave me in my mess and be right. I ain't got no reason to get mad at it. And it, hold it, I got, Lord, I'm trying to stop. And it don't seem right for me to ask you to help me fix something that I tore up. That right. ain't right. I'm the one who tore it up. But here I'm coming to you. Now I told this out. And, and I need you. Now you got to spend your resources. Now you got to burn your gas. You got to pull your chain out. Come on. You got to get out in the rain like you don't need. And all the time you're hooking on, they're sitting in the car driving. <laughs> Pastor, you got to change her tax yet? <laughs> Give it some good. <laughs> Pastor, tell me when to go. <laughs> I didn't tell you when to stop this. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> oh, I'm trying to laugh, but I'm going to think it at the same time. This is the way we go when we come to God. See, we, we got ourselves in this stuff. Come on. Some stuff we're asking God to fix. We the one did. And until we take responsibility, that's all God is saying. Take responsibility. That's what repentance means. Repent means that mean what? If repent doesn't mean to just say I'm sorry, but everybody's saying I'm sorry ain't. The best apology is changed behavior. Right? Until your behavior changes, you ain't sorry. I'm sorry, I got stuck in the door. But, 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 so why didn't you back up? I pulled out, now you ready to go. Why are you going back in the hole? You know, some folks do that every day. You go bail them out, you go do stuff, you spend your resources. You, you, hallelujah, you, call, you, you pray with him, you cry with him. And I'm going to keep doing it, I promise. I'm going to pray with you and cry with you. That's just, that's just my nature. I'm going to do it. But, I'm going to say, hold on now. I'm going to pray and cry with you, but hold on. You might need to reassess what you're doing. Because apparently, <laughs> something you're doing ain't working. I mean, that's standard reason. That's what, what, what you just said. That's insanity. What is the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing, but instead of what? That's insane. Why would people do the same thing that got them in the predicament? But it's going it's to be different this time. How? It's going to work. It's going to be, it ain't going to be the same. It, it, it's going to be different this time. How? Doing the same thing that got you to predict. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God dressed Adam and Eve in skins. God had to kill an animal to do that. Something had to die. Lord have mercy. God 
The Bible says God clothed him with skin. Where he get the skin from? Some animal. Some animal had to give up his life. Watch this. God says, I'm putting skin on you. Something innocent had to die to clothe you. Because you realize your eyes come open. Adam, where are you? I hid because I realized I was naked. You were naked before you see it. Who told us? Who told you? Okay, you did something that aroused your mind to your predicament. I'm going to cover you. God said, I'm going to forgive you. I'm going to clothe you. But you still have to get out of the garden. Thank God, we're back in the garden. Hallelujah. I thought about little Ethan. What are we going to do? <laughs> what are we going to do? That's what they were saying. They were on their way to the tomb that morning. They knew that song. What are we going to do? Yeah. Hallelujah. When Mary saw him, she thought he was the gardener. He was. He was. The gardener was bad. Yeah. <laughs> the eagle's bad. What gardener? The one that was in the eagle. Who planted the garden of Eden? God. Adam didn't plant it. God planted it. I'm closing, y'all. Sat him down in a, in, a, in a finished work. All you got to do is to guard and keep what I did. Jesus died to obtain. All we got to do is maintain. Work is done. Just maintain. Hallelujah. And, and as I told you the other day, keep the serpent out to God. The serpent was a beast of the field, not an inhabitant of the garden. Mm. Go, go Genesis 3 1, is there? Now, the serpent was the most subtle beast okay. of the field. Yes. And, I, and I, I explained to you briefly the difference between a field and a garden. Mm -hmm. A field is stuff with this stuff that's just grow wild. Yes. Yes. But a garden is a place of intention, it's a kept place. Adam took a garden and turned it into a field. A wilderness. Jesus took a wilderness and turned it back into a garden. <clears throat> and when Mary saw him, oh, I thought you was the garden. I am. <laughs> and I'm back. Don't hold on to me because I got so I got I got another I got so much I got another stop I got to make. So hold on to me. But go on down there and tell the Lord and make sure you tell Peter because he thinks I'm bad. Because <laughs> he swore and cussed that he didn't know me. Right. But go tell him. Make sure he knows that I was just hung up for his hands. Yeah. Yeah. Because I got up, he can get up too. I'm really, I'm really trying to stop. Go tell him. I love how Jesus singled Peter out. Go tell my disciples and Peter. Because Peter's a pretty bad. I want to tell him, he, I want to tell him he's still included. I know he counted himself out, but I just counted him back in. Go tell him he's still got to see the candle. That's all right, oh, that's all right. Long as I know I got a seat. Old folks say kingdom, not kingdom, kingdom. Put a head in a kingdom. You heard it say, talk about me. Good as you please. Oh, you talk. Long as I know I got a seat in your kingdom. That's all right. Tell Pooh to jump out on that one Sunday. I'm going to say, I got a seat in the canyon. And it's all right. It's all right. All right, I'm going to stop. Next time we're going to pick up with the fruit of the Spirit. Oh, I love. Hallelujah. Somebody look real quick. You still got the Bible open? Yes. Give me the first word in verse 22. But. Oh, what? But. But. Love that. He said, the works of the flesh are manifest. This, 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 this. But. but. Say, but, but always, always introduces a contrast. contrast. Say, contrast, contrast means, means that I got a choice. Oh, have mercy. We're going to get to the fruit of the Spirit. We're going to fly some more. Hallelujah. My qu one question, are you learning anything? Yes. Next question, are you going to put your car back in that same hood? Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Every hand is bowed right now. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word tonight, Lord. We thank you, O oh God, Holy Spirit. We just we thank you how you have illuminated Christ to us and in us.
We thank you how you have illuminated and breathed on this word tonight, giving us illustrations and observations. Have you given us metaphors and similes to clear up the meaning of the word? Hallelujah. Now, Father, I pray for us that we have the same mind and attitude that David had. When David said these words, he said, Thy word have I hid in my heart. Why? That I might not sin against you. Lord, help us to put this word in our hearts. The Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Verse 2, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Verse 3, in him was light, and that light was the light of men. Then he catapults down to verse 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld, we saw it. We saw him. We saw the word. We saw the word in our everyday life. We saw, and God, we still said, this is, what, this is what the Spirit of the Lord is telling me to tell you tonight, family, that the same thing Jesus was, we are. He said the word made flesh. That means that the word is our lifestyle. It is not something we just shout about. It is not just something we come and just read about, but it's what we become. The word. The word becoming flesh. And we see in that word operating in one another. We become walking, talking expressions of the word of God. Your life becomes an active sermon. Your life is the only Bible that some people don't ever read. And Father, help us now. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Hallelujah. We love you tonight, Jesus, because you first loved us. We thank you. Hallelujah. Continue to help us. Continue to strengthen us, Lord. Continue, oh God, the work that you have begun here at New Beginnings Fellowship Church. God, touch these people tonight, I pray. Touch everyone. Touch the families of those that are represented here. God, touch right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Father, for the Holy Ghost, who is our comfort. Thank you for the Holy Ghost, who is our keeper. Thank you for the Holy Ghost who is our teacher. He is the revealer of truth. He is the discloser of the Father's mind. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He's the spirit of truth. Jesus, you said when he comes, he will receive of yours and give it to us. He will bring things back to our remembrance. And Father, we thank you right now. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. As you sit, just lift your, just lift your hands right now and receive your blessing. You don't have to stand right now. Just receive this blessing. Hallelujah. Father, I just I bless your people now, Lord. I speak blessing over everyone. Hallelujah. I speak blessing over you, family. I release Father's blessing onto you now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord has seen that cry in your heart. He has seen the desires of your heart. The scripture says, and the Lord told he tells me to tell you that those desires. He says in Psalms. 37 verse 4. You know that Psalm 37 is the one that tells us to not fret ourselves because of evildoers. He says, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Many times the enemy will do that because he's trying to make you think living right don't work. He's trying to make you think that you've been doing right, you've been trying to do right before the Lord, and what has it gotten you? Hallelujah. But the devil is a liar. Hallelujah. God is doing some things. And he's doing exceeding abundantly above all we can ask of thing. I want to tell you tonight, family, with your hands up, hallelujah, that God is actively involved in the affairs of your life. Hallelujah. I want to tell you tonight, before I let you go home, that you're not in this by yourself. Hallelujah. I want to tell you tonight, hallelujah, that your problems are not exclusively your problems. I want to tell you that Jesus Christ came and he had a love affair with your predicament. He became what we were. Hallelujah. So we can become what he is, sons of God. The Son of God became the Son of Man so that the sons of men could become the sons of God. And Lord, we thank you right now for the covenant dispensation of grace. Hallelujah. For it is by grace through faith that you're saved. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Thank God for this indescribable, unspeakable gift. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet now, if you will. Hallelujah. I'm going to let you go home. Praise God. Thank you all for giving me. 25 minutes of liberty that went over. We trying to, I'm trying to cut it down to an hour, but it's hard. Hallelujah. It's so difficult. 
It's, it took me it took me half hours half hour to clear my throat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Receive this blessing as well. I speak it over you every day. I speak it over you every every at the close of every service. Hallelujah. The words from First Corinthians. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. May it rest, rule, and abide with you, his people. Henceforth, or shall I say now, henceforth and forevermore. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God cause his face to shine upon you and give you his peace. May the Lord send special a special garrison of angels down that road before you. If you travel in mercy, take you back home safely. May God keep you from all incidents and from all accidents. May your trip back home be uneventful. Hallelujah. Touch God and let a fire hedge of protection right now be all around your people. Hallelujah. The songwriter said, Jesus, be a fence all around me. Lord, we thank you for your hedge of fiery protection around us. A thousand may fall at our side, ten thousand at our right hand, but it will not come nigh us. Lord, we thank you that you've given your angels charge concerning us lest we dash our foot against the stone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These are all blessings we ask in the name that's above every name, even the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in the party family, we'll always want you to say these words with me from the book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 14. Say it after me, please, Lord. Lord. Let the words of my mouth, the of my mouth. and the meditation of my heart, of my heart. be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, o Lord, you're my strength, you're my strength. and you are, you are my redeemer. In Jesus' name, Jesus. amen.